Hello friends, uh, let's talk about immunoglycosides. Immunoglycoside is uh, antibacterial and we'll talk about the mechanism of action, clinical use and toxicities. What is the mechanism of action of immunoglycoside? Immunoglycoside is part of the mnemonic, if you remember, it's the protein synthesis inhibitors by at 30, cell at 50. Uh, the, it sits on the 30S or the 50S ribosomal subunit for immunoglycosides. It sits on the 30S ribosomal, sub, rib, ribosomal subunit and it prevents any kind of translation to continue. So that would be the first thing, the first mechanism of action. So let me just put it up here. So it, it inhibits 30S ribosomal subunit. Um, something else inhibits ribosomal subunit and we know it by that mnemonic by at 30 so AT T stands for tetracycline so uh, the T also the tetracycline also inhibits 30S ribosomal subunit but how do we distinguish between from one to the other okay so the main distinction between is that the aminoglycoside will inhibit initiation complex okay it will specifically inhibit initiation complex where um, tetracycline it's going to inhibit uh, attachment of amino acyl tRNA from sitting from its position at 30s ribosomal subunit so as soon as I see initiation complex it's like a buzzword we know it's aminoglycoside so that's very very important Another thing we have to know about the mechanism of action is that aminoglycoside is not going to work if there is no oxygen. So the uptake of aminoglycoside requires oxygen. As a result, since it requires oxygen, it's only going to work on organisms that are aerobic. Okay, so that is also something we have to remember that it only works on aerobic organisms. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk about which organisms are aerobic obligate aerobes really quickly to get an idea. So even though it works on aerobic organisms, um, it also works, it only works in aerobic organisms and now, okay, so now we're going to talk about the clinical use. So let's talk about the clinical use of immunoglycosides. Now what are the clinical use of immunoglycosides? It works on um, gram negative rods which are aerobic primarily okay so it works on primarily it works on gram negative rods okay so what are gram negative rods can you think of some the only gram negative rod that usually comes to my mind which is also aerobic is pseudomonas that's the only one that comes to my mind but it also works in other um, gram-negative aerobic organisms for example Cenobacter and and one more Enterobacter these are also gram-negative and they are also aerobic but it also works on some um, some uh, gram-positive organisms for example Mycobacterium so it works on mycobacterium too along with um, pseudomonas okay um, let's quickly talk about the different types of aminoglycosides I know I should have probably talked about it before but I didn't think I didn't think of it so it's my bad the different types of aminoglycosides are there's a mnemonic for that too it's G Ignats, okay, G N A T S, G for gentamicin, N for neomycin, A for amikacin, T for tobramycin, and S for streptomycin. Now, of these five aminoglycosides, uh, we know that amikacin is hepatically excreted okay 
we have to know these kind of details. I'm sorry, that's the way pharmacology works in step one. We have to know these teeny tiny details or else we lose out on easy marks. So amikacin is hepatically excreted, though others are probably excreted through blood, through urine or stool. It's not important. Amikacin is hepatically excreted. So um, if someone has liver failure, you don't want this to work. And streptomycin is used for TB. Okay, so the other, the rest is more generic. Amikacin is hepatically excreted, where streptomycin is used for TB. Now, these are some of the clinical use of um, aminoglycosides. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is neomycin that also has a little bit of specificity. Neomycin is used for bowel surgery. All these notes is going to be on my blog. So if you want to copy it down um, from my blog, you're most welcome to do that. I will try to leave a comment under the video where my blog is exactly. So, okay, so neomycin is used for bowel surgery, amicocin is used, it's hepatically excreted, and streptomycin is used for TB. And the clinical use is that for gram negative aerobic infections, we can use aminoglycosides, that's most of the time, but it is also used for mycobacterium, which is gram positive. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the toxicities of um, aminoglycosides. Now, um, the toxicities, there's a mnemonic with the toxicity, and the mnemonic is not. Uh, N stands for nephrotoxicity, O stands for ototoxicity, and T stands for teratogen. Now, not this mnemonic is also used for in other bacteria. Can you think of which bacteria has the same kind of mnemonic? The bacteria is, I'm sorry, which antibiotic? The antibiotic is vanco. Vancomycin has the same mnemonic. N stands for nephrotoxicity, O stands for autotoxicity and T is the, it's the T which is different and T stands for thrombophlebitis. Okay, thrombophlebitis. Now, um, one more thing I want to mention is that immunoglycosides obviously because it's teratogenic should not be prescribed to pregnant women. It's one of those drugs which could not be prescribed to pregnant women and we have to Understand that in a pregnant woman, if it has been prescribed by mistake, it's going to cause teratogenic effects on the child and it's going to cause ototoxicity in the mother. Okay, so that's something I just wanted to throw it out there to understand the distinction. Okay, so that's all about um, immunoglycosides. I quickly wanted to talk about the obligate aerobes because we should understand or we should know which are the obligate aerobes and which are gram negative so that we have a clear understanding um, which kind of organisms immunoglycosides can work on All right so that's the next thing I'm going to talk about it here okay. so there's a mnemonic I know I talk about a lot of mnemonics but that's how I learned it and that's how I'm very very definite when I'm answering questions that I'm not missing out on much there is other obligate aerobes, but we are going to only talk about the high yield ones. So these are the high yield, which comes most often in an exam and which also is faced most when we are going to be seeing patients. So um, the mnemonic in this case is nagging pests must breathe. So N for nagging, P for pest, must, M, and breathe is bacillus. Now N for nocardia it's a gram positive organism these are all obligate aerobes by the way which means it must need oxygen to survive these four nocardia is gram positive pseudomonas is gram negative rod so that's where we use aminoglycoside obviously m mycobacterium it's also a gram positive organism and bacillus is also gram positive so 
mostly we are talking about pseudomonas when we are talking about immunoglycosides and we are also talking about mycobacterium can also be used in immunoglycoside which is kind of an exception even though it's not gram negative rod immunoglycoside can still be used um, in case of um, mycobacterium anyway so that's all that that's all for today and i'll see you again in my next video probably with my next um pharmacology drug. Thank you. Bye for now.